Hey everyone, it's Shaderock. Uh, been a while since I've done something somewhat edited, uh, because most of my content has just been the highlights from the, well, not even the highlights, it's been the streams broken up into parts. This is something I've been putting off for a while. It is the final thoughts on the Super Robot Wars projects. I know at the end of SR30, I said I was going to have it where I was building a Huckbin uh, Mark II. The issue is, looking back at that footage, my thoughts are all over the place, and I was a little too focused on building the model, so I instead decided I'd do things like this. I could have as a more clear and concise final thoughts on the series. Um, so, first off, we're going to start with a little bit of background with me as a player and a streamer here, and my experience with these franchises that were a part of these games. I grew up, my very first anime I ever watched was Mobile Suit Gundam. Mecha is my favorite, one of my favorite mecha, uh, genres. Gundam will always probably be my favorite mecha genre, but I have since expanded and started to, like, you know, watch more. I mentioned it during, I've started watching some more Super Robot ones. I've started, I finished Get a Robot Armageddon. I watched Mazinga Infinity. I actually watched Gridman and Dino Zenon specifically because of Super Robot Wars 30. And then starting with V, it was a game it was with Space Battleship Yamato, another one I watched a lot as a kid. So each of these games let me talk about some shows that I utterly adored and grew up with. But with that though, uh let's get focused on talk about the individual games starting with of course, we will be starting back with Super Robot Wars V. SRV was the very first Super Robot Wars game we streamed on this channel. It was, as I mentioned before, it was picked up on a whim. I was already in between games, I couldn't really decide what I wanted to stream. And then I thought, hey, I had SR30, I have not finished it, blah blah blah. But then I remembered, oh wait, SR30 is really long. So as I was going through, I noticed on Amazon that there were three SR titles on Switch available in English. And they were SRs V, X, and T. And one thing I noticed with V, and as I was trying to do the series roster, was some of the shows included. It had Gundam Double Zeta. It had Char's Counterattack, Unicorn, Pseudo of Aldeva, Space Battleship Yamato, and Gundam Double O. Series I love. They were series I grew up like I didn't grow up watching all of them. Like Ava I didn't start watching until I was in my teens and I didn't really I didn't really finish Ava until I was much older, mostly because I I have my issues with Neon Genesis Evangelion. But um I do enjoy the rebuilds. And then Mobile Suit Gundam, I as I said before, I grew up watching Mobile Suit Gundam. It's very special to me. Same as Space Battleship Yamato. And Gundam 00 is my personal favorite Gundam series. So this whole project was a no-brainer for me. And then we started it. I had so I had such a good time with some of these units and some of the characters. I, I'll be honest, I went in expecting to like characters like the, the Gundam cast because I already enjoyed them. I did not expect to find some new characters who have actually popped into some of my new favorite characters. I actually really do like the goofy shenanigans of the Nadesco crew. I... When I first heard some of the stuff about Cross Ange and I got some information about it, I'm like, oh god, I, I might have issues with these characters. But no, they were fucking phenomenal. From the ever-aggressive Ange to... Hilda, like, really, we started out hating Hilda. We thought she was a bitch, but then it became uh, it became hysterical once Hilda was really down bad for Ange, Tusk, and just everything with Embryo. The amount of hatred we had for Embryo towards the end was amazing. To the point, throughout the entire series, if we had a problem, we just blamed Embryo. SRV was a great start for it, and. The only thing that really threw us off was the end game, where we did not expect to have fucking a whole bunch of the final boss. 
Like, I was expecting, you know, some high-powered units and one final boss here, and I wasn't expecting an army. But after I, I uh, went back in with a cooler head and I put a lot more into Getter and uh, Mazinger Zero, it was a breeze. And, well, to be honest, a lot of the problems I... Looking back at it, a lot of the problems I was going to say I would have with SRV are more so just me not understanding the SR system well enough. Such as, well, if I was smart, I would have put Ignore Size on all of the mobile suits. And all of the paramails. They would have been a lot more useful. And that was just dumb of me. And that's what a lot of it was. It was just a lot of me just not knowing, you know, not thinking through some of my actions. If I was to go back through it, I would definitely handle, the, handle certain units a lot better. But it was such a fun game, though. Some of the stories, some of the ridiculous moments, the everything with Cross Ange and um, Full Metal Panic, the fact that they were so heavily connected was just amazing. And then, of course, there were our original characters. I jokingly call Nine our little gremlin, and she is. She was a fucking gremlin who was constantly trying to find Chitose a, a boyfriend. But, uh, she was great. Of, like, all of our sub-pilots, I think her and the one from SRT are probably my favorites. And... The machine... The Van Ray grew on me. I'm not the biggest fan of that style of leg unit, but, you know what, it, it really grew on me. I... I like it more on Vang than I do on... Zilgard and SRX. Like, in Aussie. SRV, I felt, had a very good pacing in terms of giving us super robots and real types. You never really felt we were out of balance with the two. They, because very early on, we got Get a Robo and Malzinger, and they were super robots that could carry us through to the very end. The same cannot be said about the next, next game. Oh boy, SRX, where to start? So first off, SRX, we got to talk more about the fact that we all hate Embryo. That's already a plus. Things I redid, I, I'm talking about the series of the series included in SRX. SRX added a lot of series that I actually really enjoyed being able to talk about. In particular, co like here's the thing. The, I was more familiar with a lot of the series in SRV going into it because there was a lot of Gundam. Going into SRX, there wasn't a lot I knew about a lot of these series. The only ones I really knew about were the returning Gundam pilots, the Jeet no Rikungis that I knew a bit about, and then I knew everything about Gundam Wing, because, again, Gundam Wing is my very first Gundam series I ever watched. So, you can imagine going into it, I'm kind of finding a lot, there's not a lot to talk about. Well, actually, I was finding a lot to talk about about these, because these were new characters I never met before. I loved how, like, everyone kind of played into the innocence of Otaro, because he's just a kid. He doesn't under, he didn't really, he had very black and white views on, on war that none of them really had anymore. And then, of course, there was the best, the one I was so excited to talk about for this one, besides Code Geass. Tengen Topa. Gurren Lagan, one of my very first, and honestly, my very first super robot animes I watched. Gotta talk about, like, the fuck, Gurren Lagan, and now that I've learned more, by extension, Getter Robo, just a lot of it does shape a, a little bit about how I see some things in real life. And then there was the Buddy Complex group. I had never seen anything with Buddy Complex before this game. And you know what? They were fun. They were fucking great. I loved the whole thing where, like, Hero has, like, this deep plot with them, and he just doesn't say shit. And, of course, we got to talk about Iron Mask, and I got to talk about how he is... He just got cucked and then born to kill half the human population. It was... It was an experience, but you know what? I wouldn't give it up again. The only issue I had with SRX is the fact that it took so long to give us good super robots. Until we really got Gurren Lagon, we were at a heavy disadvantage. Just because a lot of the machines we got really early on were squishy. 
I also don't mind the introduction of the new system for um, giving SR points just for beating a level without dying instead of having the SR challenges, because the SR challenges really just got stupid. And if you weren't prepped going into the level, you weren't going to be completing an SR challenge. Now I will say, Lelouch erasing Marion's memories of Charles was so, uh, this is so brutal and something I actually did not expect from Lelouch. And you know what? It just goes to show why you don't fuck with Zero. And then, ah yes, the third game. The game where everyone was just really down bad for our protagonist. SRT with Sagarai. Okay, this one had somewhat of a similar issue going into it. I had some of a similar issue going into it that I did with um, SRX, where I wasn't too familiar with a lot of these shows. I had become familiar with Mazinger Infinity, especially after watching Mazinger Infinity and SR30. Same with Ray Earth and Gunbuster. Not Gunbuster, um, Gun X Sword. And of course, I knew G Gundam. But I knew of Gunbuster by reputation. And at this point, I actually started watching the Desco, so I got even better laughs out of all the different uh, sh shenanigans of the Nadesco crew, though they did play them a little bit more serious in this one. Then there was the two standouts, the ones who I did not expect to be taught, I did not, oh okay, one of them I expected to love everything about it, just because I love everything about the way the unit is used in this game, but Harlock and Spike Spiegel. I, I actually really do enjoy Cowboy Bebop. I finished it a couple times, I just, I love everything about it, the space western, the detail on all the ships and the guns, the swordfish's design, the, the watching it fly, and then in this, the way it is just, it is just scenes from the anime, and it is beautiful to watch, even though the fact that the Bebop Formation 2 is just recreating the opening. Then Harlock, fucking Harlock, just the whole mentality behind him. It's just something I I love having from beginning to end. Gun X Sword, the fact that we had the claw and the idiot speech. One of my favorite things from that show. Um the This was actually the first game that I decided like, hey, I'm gonna invest into Ray Earth and see what it does. Cause I didn't really use Ray Earth too much in my first run of SR30, and I regret that because holy shit, Ray Earth is busted. And of course, the ever amazing character that was Master fucking Asia. Like, it was always just crazy shit with him. SRT had, like, the burning passion that is present in so many of these shows. From Harlock to Gunbuster to G Gundam and to King of the Braves at the very core of all of them. Despite it being a Twilight Age that's supposed to be a waning time for humanity, this group just earned with fucking passion and it was amazing it was something i utterly adore from beginning to end and i'm so happy that we got to experience this whole crew and that would also lead us into uh that would bring us to the expansion pass the really the first piece of dlc we ever covered with super actually no, not really it is the first piece of dlc we ever covered with super robot wars the VTX trilogy would come to an end with the expansion pass bringing the OG pilots from V and X into the world of T. It gave us a last hurrah with the characters of T. It gave us a last showdown with all the bosses of V and X. We gotta see the insanity of putting Chitose and Sagare together. And the comedic routine just went off the rails with you know, these, you know, every single female character that was an OG character in this game really had a, had a thing for Sagarai. It was amazing. It was so much fun just to have the three sub pilots all together and them all just discussing their goals. It was so good. It was short. It was fun. I mean. The, they played it safe by erasing, like, making the memories of the NX hazy to the pilots, because we, we mentioned it during the expansion that we 
we had the weirdest time with the Crossbone crew since we met them at like three different points in their history. Seabook in particular was just all over the place. Um, so, and same with Amuro. Amuro in all three of these games had a completely different fate since the Amuro in V went through the events of Shara's counterattack. The Amuro in X was during the counterattack. And the Amuro in T was before the counterattack. So it was just so. And then there was the fact that there were three different. Well, two different Kojis. And then the Nadesco crew. It was so. Not even to mention Double Zeta. It was so much easier just to right, have their memories be hazy. And you know what? It was fun. It was great. It was just a great last hurrah with all these characters. And it was a nice send off to these three games. And you know what? I felt that the V and X crew that we got, especially the protagonist units, just slid right into my formation very nicely. Though I do think the final bosses are a little too tanky. Like it feels like um, Ed, you know, Ed, God of Wisdom, is still built like Gurren Lagann is on your team when he isn't anymore. But you know what, we, we really cut it close, but we did make it in the end, and we cleared this, and would eventually end this entire saga with one more game. Ah yes, SR30, the latest Super Robot Wars title and the final stop on this entire saga, and my very first Super Robot Wars game. I know I haven't really had a lot to say about them from a gameplay perspective, there really isn't much to say, they're tactics games, the most I had to say was like, you know, just the way they gave us different units. SR30 chose a very, I felt did a very smart thing by letting us choose and built it around the units we started with. For example, if we started in space, we had more real types, and if we saw on Earth, we had more super robots, and the game went from there. And, you know what? It is a great send-off. I mean, we had, and it was also a great goodbye to some of these characters. For example, it's the it, as of right now, and as far as I know, there is no plans for a Code Geass R4. R3 is the end of Lelouch's story as of as of this recording. Eh, watch it like as I post this, they announce R4 or some shit. <laughs> God, but um, we had so many interesting characters, and especially so many characters from the end. I will say it again, I will never stress, never stop stressing the fact that Final Gal Gai Gar and all of its content related to the Gal Gai Gar plotline is so good despite never having an animation. Like, they were never animated in any way, shape, or form. They were a novelization that was given the green light by Sunrise because they have not animated it. They, these, all these, everything related to Gal Gai Gar on this was animated from the ground up, and it turned out so good. I now want to see this actually as a movie or an OVA or a series. Sunrise, please fucking do it. Then we had Gridman, which makes a tokusatsu, well, in terms of SR proper, the first tokusatsu. And I'm pretty sure I made my thoughts on Gridman very well. Especially during the ending of its scenario against Alexis. That whole scenario is so fun. Especially because Alexis is just... He's such a campy villain. Uh, Vaughn was just great all around. Jay Decker. Jay Decker was fucking phenomenal in terms of writing. Like... I said, I not, I've not watched many of the Bra oh, any of the Brave series before going into these. So, this is my first time really experiencing King of the Braves. Um... Brave Police and Brave Express, but like I loved the whole like you know AIs questioning their um the heart and everything like that. It was just so well done, especially when it was put next to Yuta and the um of well Yuta of the Gridman team and the MJP of the Majestic Prince, since they were going through the same thing. Since their whole thing was about do uh, relate to their duty. And their organ and their existence. Can't really say anything about Ray Earth. Ray Earth was just handled exactly the same as it was before. But the one character I've been I haven't talked about because I was going to talk about him with this part because he's consistent in all three of his appearances in V, T, and Thirty. 
the violence, the man who just doesn't stop screaming, the extremely overpowered Getter Robo with Ryoma Nagari. He is consistently amazing in all three in all three of his appearances, just doing stupid shit. And the fact that like, Getter Robo was just such a powerful unit. Um, then we actually had the DLC for this, which was like a full-blown expansion content, which is different and something we never had with Super Robot Wars. We had the expansion pass in SRT, but never like the massive amount of units we got. And I will forever thank the Shigellian movie for opening my eyes to what the fuck is going on with Mecha. Seriously, Hatsune Miku being nuked by Godzilla was not something I thought I'd ever see. I will never let that go. Uh, we had our first Isekai protagonist, or, well, Isekai anime protagonist with Ernie. And I resonate with Ernie. I've said it very clearly. I resonate with Ernie since he's just a mecha nerd. Um, the two getter, well, three getters after we get Dragon is just terrifying. And the fact that we also got Getter Emperor to appear again, who we haven't seen since V. Oh, it was just so good. Um, and the final, like, ending 2.30 does feel a little bittersweet. Sealing the third, the Huckman 30, sealing the Justinger. But it, it does feel like, you know, sealing, like it's saying goodbye to Super Robot Wars. Not forever, just for now. Because, you know, one day, Super Robot Wars will come back. And you know that day when it comes back, I will be there and I will stream the ever-living hell out of it. But, um, this entire series was just a treat to go through, beginning to end, top to bottom. I got to share my fa my thoughts on my favorite type of anime. I got to talk about my uh, some of my favorite shows. I got to share some amazing moments. I got to see characters and series I've never seen before. And I've actually sat down and started experiencing myself now. And well, I look forward to the day I get to see more from Super Robot Wars. And with that, though, it, for right now, we will be it is official that we will be closing the book on Super Robot Wars. I'm sorry this is so low, like, all over the place. There, it, Like I said, there isn't really much for me to discuss with the gameplay. It's pretty standard. A lot of the stuff would just be, like, talking about, like, the, the dry stuff. Of, like, I like how... I didn't want it to be the dry stuff. Like, I like how this game gave me these units earlier. Or this game gave me these units late. Blah, blah, blah. That, I just felt, wouldn't be the spirit. I figured I'd talk about the series and my final thoughts on all of them. I think overall the way I I feel about each of them is SR30 I feel is the easiest for a new player to get into. V I think has the best original story in when mixed with an existing story since the whole main plot for V is still just the Space Battleship Yamato plot and the uh, Super Civilization Gardam plot is just slid right in amazingly and it has no problem. X I think has the best multiverse plot since it has uh, its own or like original world that it uses as the base for all well all rat stars as the base for um cross Ange, for getter not getter from girl and lagon and we went from and we brought in the the fact that it also has the whole thing of war peace and revolution for endless waltz rolled into it it just works so well and then I think T probably has some of the best writing just because of the fact so much of it becomes a comedy routine at parts. Or with everyone being down bad for Sagarai, the Bebop crew, the Desco crew. The, the fact they have all these characters just doing all this, like all these characters who basically are just walking comedy routines at the end of the day, just existing together, but also still Holding weight and being serious is impressive. If you are a Mecha fan and you've never played SR30, I really do highly recommend them. If, again, if you have, if you are an American player, 
SR30 is actively available on Steam. You can pick it up today. Um, if you are looking to play V and play through the entire VXT trilogy, you can pick them up on a Nintendo Switch or PSP, to my understanding. And they are in English. So I highly, highly recommend these games. And take your time with it. Have fun. Enjoy the writing. It, the, the characters are what make these games. Because at the end of the day, that's the thing that makes Mecha what it is. It's as much as I love the giant robots, I love the designs, I love the action. None of these shows would ever be as good without character. Character is what makes Mecha. That has been true for years. Whether it be Koji Kabuto decide, in the Mazinger deciding to be a god or a devil. Or Amuro Ray getting into the Gundam to fight Zeon. Or Rayoma Nagri being an extremely violent motherfucker fighting dinosaurs. Or even to the love of trains from Shinkelion's Hayato, or Ernie and with his love of Mecha as a whole, wanting to build his own Mecha. Vaughn's quest for revenge. Like, Vaughn's quest for revenge could have been a to kill the claw. It's just a very simple and boring plot. But Vaughn is such an extreme character. It, you just can't stop watching. It's entertaining. And, well, they nailed this years ago for Mecha. There have been Mecha series that have bad character writing. And they just, there's a reason they're not talked about. They just aren't remembered. There's a reason we still talk about Gurren Lagann, Code Geass, Gundam. Um, a reason I actually kind of... I want to see a season two of Knights and Magic. Or everything with King of the Braves. I had no idea what King of the Braves is before this series, but now I actually love Guy as a character. Just like this burning passion. To just whenever he has a problem, he just screams bravery and solves all his problems. Uh. Uh, I, I, one day I will figure out how to properly end a video, but that's not today. Everyone, I hope I hope you all enjoyed my final thoughts, though, on SR. My final thoughts are, this series is amazing. Play it if you can. And I will see you all later.